Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or as the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow thyself down to them nor serve them for I am the, I, the Lord thy God and a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Just one pause there to see the difference between those that hate him and those that love him. Loving him would end that curse. Hating him would bring it on. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For God will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but in the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou or thy son or thy daughter, thy maidservant, thy manservant, thy maidservant, or thy cattle, nor thy stranger which is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in that all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. That is the Ten Commandments, the Word of God. They're not suggestions. They are commandments. And God meant what he said. Now you think about the New Testament and say, well, we're not under the law, we're under grace. Okay, I guess it's okay to murder. I guess it's okay to commit adultery. I guess it's okay to steal. No, no, no. That's trampling on the Word of God. Jesus made it clear in the Sermon on the Mount that you've heard it said or I, you've heard it told and then I tell you this, Jesus did not diminish the commandments, he increased the commandments before us. There are four truths that I want to share with you. I think they're very important things to hear and I hope that you will take note of them. The first thing regarding commandments in this issue of legalism, how many of you grew up under legalism? I'm curious. You raise your hand and say, I grew up under legalism. That's interesting. The first thing you need to identify are these commandments God's commandments or are they the commandments of men? If they're God's commandments, we must obey them, follow them. If they're man's commandments, they'll come to nothing. Nor should we give much heed or attention to them. We should follow the commands of God. And always identify the difference. It will help you in the issue of license and legalism to know, did God command this, or is this something man came up with? And they're readily recognized, friends. It's not hard to discern. God's word is written in the book. Believe the book just as it is written. Do the book. Follow the book. Thank God. Somebody said the Bible is basic instructions before leaving earth. B-I-B-L-A. <laughs> Follow the book. Know whether it's God's commands or man's commandments. And I'll guarantee you if it's man's commandments, it will be nothing but hypocrisy. Secondly, if we're going to live in the will of God, I want you to hear the song that we sang out of Psalm 19 today. The law of the Lord is perfect. And may I add to that that the Bible also teaches us that as for God, his ways are perfect. I do not serve an imperfect God. I serve a perfect God. He is perfect in all of his ways. And he's called you to, and I to live according to the will of God. Don't tremble on the wonderful, amazing, and sweet grace of God. Follow him with all your heart. May I tell you in this issue of legalism versus license, there is a better way. Legalism is not the way of God. 
License, a license to sin, is not the will of God. Both are out of balance, whether it would be legalism on one side or license on the other. Neither one is correct. The reason that we follow God's command is not that it's legalistic or not that we have freedom to do whatever we want to do because we do not. The answer to this issue is one simple word, not legalism, not license, love. It'll come up in a sermon pretty quick on this series of living in the will of God. Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. If you love me, if you love me, keep my commands. Those that raise their hands that you grew up in a legalistic situation in your upbringing would readily recognize the do's and the don'ts. And I don't remember any of the do's. Right? They were all don'ts. Don't, 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 don't. I even signed a membership card when I was a kid. And there were a lot of don'ts on that. Oh, there were. Yeah. Actually, I didn't sign it. The pastor brought me in as a member and I never signed the card. <laughs> I was away in college, I just got drafted in. Drafted in. Yeah. Furthermore, on this issue of legalism versus license, may it be our love for God that causes us to obey Him. But there are consequences, as we spoke first Sunday in January on Sunday night, there are consequences of keeping or not keeping His commandments. Well, Pastor, I'm not bound by the law. Well, have you ever considered driving the wrong way down an interstate highway? I mean, the law says that you're supposed to be on this side of the interstate highway, but you're not under any law. You're under grace. So let's get on the wrong side of the highway and drive like the British and the Jamaicans do. <laughs> Can't even find the British. <laughs> Amen. Yes, the law matters. Uh, defy the law of gravity. Jesus, if you'll jump off the pinnacle of this temple, uh, he'll, he'll watch over you. He'll, he'll give his angels charge concerning you. Uh, but the Lord, the Lord said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Jesus was subject to gravity at that point, you understand. And sometimes it matters that we obey the, the law that is, is given to us. And there are consequences of not obeying the law. I told my Sunday school class today, I talked to youth class, boys, you did a great job in that class. They answered every question wonderfully. I was very, very impressed and pleased. And uh, parents, you should be proud. But uh, I told them what happened to me the other night. I was driving north on 69 Highway, and a car, 65 mile an hour there, of course, and the car was in my lane of traffic, dead stopped in my lane of traffic on 69 North. But he did have his turn signal on. <laughs> He, uh, he wanted to get on the Cloverleaf to 435. He was in 69 Highway traffic lane, but he had a couple of lanes to get over to get into the city. But he's, he was courteous. I mean, he obeyed the law. He took his turn signal on, stopped on a major highway, and waited for three cars to go by on our right before he would take this loop. And, and then, of course, I see there's a truck barreling in behind me, and he's dead stopped in front of me. I gave him the courtesy of my horn <laughs> for about two miles. <laughs> Somehow I think it's against the law to stop that stop on the highway so you can get off the highway on our ramp and uh, he got the message. Laws do matter. There are consequences of obeying. I told my Sunday school class today, I never fear, I never fear an audit of the IRS. I have no fear whatsoever. Uh, last time I was audited, uh, 1991, I made money on the audit and they've never called again. <laughs> the words of the auditor were, you do keep good records. I've got a whole family coming. 
You do keep good records. I was on my way out. The guy in the last booth on the end was trying to explain to the auditor how the dog ate his mileage book. <laughs> well, if keeping the law of man is important and provides benefits, how much more does keeping the law of God provide benefits to our lives? And there's no opinion of man that changes the law of God. The law of God is perfect. And I am thankful for these Ten Commandments. How about you? It's the revelation of God written by His own finger on those tablets of stone. Thank you, Lord, for the law of the Lord. So, if you are going to live, and I am going to live, in the perfect will of God, we must, say must, must. keep His commandments. Not in a legalistic sense. But that he has written his law in our hearts and we love him and we want to obey him because we love him. Amen. Number one, and there are eight points today, Lord willing. Number one, we keep his commandments that it may go well with us and well with our children. Have you wanted to go well with you and your children? Yes. Deuteronomy 4, 39 and 40, go therefore this day and consider it in thy what? thy heart, that the Lord, he is God in heaven above, upon the earth beneath, there is none else. Thank God we serve the one true and living God. Yes. There's none like him. Thou shalt keep, that's an important word, thou shalt keep therefore his statutes, his commandments, that I command thee this day, for what purpose? That it may go well with thee, and with thy children after thee, and that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth, which the Lord thy God giveth thee forever. I am thankful that with the commandment, there is great promise. Yes. What is a commandment from God? It is a covenant. Yes. The old covenant, the new covenant, the old testament, the, the new testament is a covenant, and every covenant that's ever been made comes with condition. There must be conditions. If you will keep his commandments, then it will go well with thee, with thy children after thee, and you will prolong your days upon the earth which the Lord thy God giveth thee forever. Thank God for the promise of God. There is great benefit in keeping the commands of God. I've been preaching since I was 15, 16. I, uh, I've been pastoring for 38 and a half years. And I cannot tell you the number of times that I reflect back on the lives of people who have been blessed, 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 and their children have been blessed, their posterity has been blessed because they have kept the commandment of God. And I've also witnessed those that have rebelled against the command of God. And even with the troubles that everyone faces in the natural realm of life, there is benefit yes. in keeping yes. the commands yes. of God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. You're blessed. Yes. You're blessed when you keep the commandments of God. You're blessed if your parents and grandparents and great-grandparents kept the commandments of God. And the blessing extends past you and to your children. And you prolong your days upon the earth. Oh, hey, Cash, you must be a commandment keeper and a half. I like prolonging our days on the earth. My dad was supposed to die a year ago. I think he's going to watch the Super Bowl tonight. I know he is. Some of you have made it past the average age of human life. Thank God for the prolonging of days upon the earth. It's the blessing of God. Think about old Methuselah. 969 years of age. He must have really been a commandment keeper. Nobody remembers number two. They only remember number one, Methuselah, 969. Nobody remembers Jared, 962. He must have kept a lot of commandments in his day. Enoch, he was such a commandment keeper in the commandments of the law. Moses hadn't even been written yet for these guys. He followed after God in such a perfect way that he was not for God took him. And I don't care whether your father Abraham or these patriarchs that I've mentioned or somebody living in this 21st century, it benefits you 
to honor God, to love God, to follow God, to serve God, to keep His commandments. And do it not because it's written on the page. Do it because it's written in your heart. Amen. How many of you love the Lord with all your heart? Amen. Glory to God. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Keep His commandments that may be well with thee and thy children. Keep His commandments by doing what is right in the sight of the Lord. Deuteronomy 6, 17 and 18. He shall what? Diligently, diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God. His testimonies, His statutes, which He hath commanded thee. And thou shalt do, now it's one thing to say it, it's another thing to do it. I didn't get a single amen on that. I'm, I'm sure I wrote it in my notes here. They'll say amen right here. Yes. Thou shalt do what is right and good. Where? God must be watching. God knows every failure, every shortcoming that I have had, every sin. Every act of rebellion. And God also knows when I honor Him with my worship, with my love, yeah. adoration for Him, right. and a life that would please Him. God is watching. I had no problem knowing this truth all my life, because in Sunday school and children's church, I reflect on that time period often. I learned more about theology in those days in Sunday school and, and uh, Church, I learned more in childhood than I ever learned in Bible college. Thank you, teachers of Sunday school. And yet, of course, in the modern day, we don't need Sunday school. My, 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 my. Where would I be without Sunday school? Everybody ought to go to Sunday school. Men, women, boys, girls, everybody. Thank God for Sunday school. And that got to the songs of Sunday school. Taught me, oh, be careful the lies what you see, ears what you hear, hands what you do, feet where you go. I wish they'd say mind, I wish they'd also say mind what you think. Why, there's a father up above looking down in tender love. The sight of the Lord matters. The sight of the Lord matters. Do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord swear to thy fathers. Let us do what is good and right in the sight of the Lord. Do you want to live in the will of God? Do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord. Number three, do it for your own good. Do it for your own good. And ask Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? That will be also an upcoming message again. What does the Lord thy God require of thee? Did you notice require means <laughs> it's not just uh, extra credit. This is the basic requirement of God. What does the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord thy God with what? All thy heart and with all thy soul. So when Jesus quoted in the New Testament, what is the greatest commandment? He answers the question. He said, with all your heart and with all your soul. Wow. It's easy to devote our heart to things. I have been a devoted Chiefs fan from the earliest remembrance I have. My dad inflicted me with this problem. <laughs> Afflicted me with this problem. And uh, it's been a curse, to be honest with you, to be a Chiefs fan, really. <laughs> you just don't know the troubles I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows but Jesus. I heard different ones uh, praying today, and God, if you don't mind, <laughs> would you please help the Chiefs tonight? <laughs> I hope God doesn't answer, but he might. <laughs> Kind of interesting how we set our heart and our affections on things. We love this and we love that and we love this person so much. 
love you with all my heart, is a common illustration I say. I would never go to my wife and tell her I love you with half my heart. Love you with all my heart. The heart matters. Here, catch this. Not just in the New Testament, but even in the Old Testament. The law. You're to do this with all your heart and with all your soul. Obedience has always been and will always be. Obedience to God will always be for our good. Verse 13. To keep the commandments of the Lord, they're His, and His statutes which I command thee this day, help me, for thy good. Turn to your neighbor and tell them it's for your own good. <laughs> Generally, when I heard those words growing up, something bad was about to happen to me. <laughs> this is for your own good. Ouch. No, it really is. It's for our own good. To keep the commandments of God. Number four. I love this one. It's lengthy. This day the Lord thy God hath commanded thee to do these statutes and judgments. Thou shalt therefore keep and do them with all thy heart, with all thy soul. Thou hast avouched, thou hast vowed the Lord, to the Lord this day to be thy God, to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, and to hearken unto his voice. Now being an opinionated person, I said this not too many weeks ago, and I got the strangest looks from this congregation. I think most of you were thinking, you have heard it. Um, but somebody said, opinion is all that matters. And I'm telling you today that opinion doesn't matter not a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor, you're the most opinionated person I ever met. Well, you know, judge yourself. <laughs> Opinion doesn't matter to me. It's the word of God. I mean, when he says, thus said the Lord, pay attention, pay heed, do what it says. God's word. God's word. Mm. Opinion. That changes all the time. Have you seen the opinions change in your lifetime? Oh my goodness. My goodness, we've gone from Andy Griffith and I love Lucy and Beverly Hillbillies. What's the first thing you know? Old Jets and Millionaires. <laughs> now look at it. I think opinions and cultural mores and morals have changed dramatically before our eyes. And maybe you ain't seen nothing yet. But the Word of God hasn't changed. Come on, the Word hasn't changed. Yeah. You vow to the Lord. You're going to walk in His ways, keep His statutes, His commandments, His judgments, hearken to His voice. The Lord hath avouched thee this day to be His peculiar people. Of all the promises and uh, all the commandments in the Word of God, this one should be easy for me to keep. <laughs> Naturally, I am a peculiar person. God only made one when he made me. I'm a peculiar person. Even my wife just said amen to that. <laughs> Christians, here's a great song for you. If anybody asks, ask, ask, what's the matter with me, me, me? You tell them I'm saved, 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 and filled with God. I'm so stupid when they call me a holy roller, I think it's a compliment. I mean, never rolled anywhere but in my sleep. <laughs> we are a strange and peculiar people, every eye. We are not of this world. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. I'm thrilled that we're not yes. of this world. This world is mess. Yes. This world is crazy. They're going full steam ahead. Broad and a wide path to a place you never want to go. We're strange, we're peculiar. You Christians, you're just weird, thank you. We are strange. 
strangers, foreigners, pilgrims. We're not of this world. We're looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. We don't live for this life alone. We live for the life to come. We do not live for ourselves. We live for God. We don't live for the creature. We live for the creator. We're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. That you should, you're called to show forth the praises of Him who has brought you out of darkness into His marvelous light. I'm glad to be here. If this world is normal, I'm glad to be peculiar. As he promised thee that thou shouldest keep most oh no, keep all his commandments. Can't pick and choose, can we? And to make thee high above all nations which he hath made. Didn't God honor that promise? He surely did. High above all nations which he hath made, in praise and name and honor, that thou mayest be a holy people. We're a peculiar people in this passage. And we are a holy people. Set apart, we're holy under the Lord our God as He has spoken. Amen. Now, I preach to you in just a moment. Holiness is not out of fashion or style with God, He's a holy God. Every revelation of the throne of God reveals holy, holy, holy. The earth is full of your glory. May we not be like Lot, who got comfortable in Sodom. May we be determined to be different from this, this evil world and this evil day. Not to be, I don't know, something, I don't even have the adjective to give you. But I do have this one. Let us be authentic. Yeah. Authentic. Yeah. And may I add one? Obedient. Yes. Yes. Authentically peculiar. Authentically holy. Be ye holy, for I am holy, says the Lord. <laughs> That is the will of God for your life and for mine. Joshua 22 and 5. Take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law. Diligent heed to do the commandment and the law. Which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and to cleave unto him and to serve him with all your heart and soul. How many times are we going to hear this? All your heart and soul. Joshua repeated what Moses said. Do you kind of like it when your children and grandchildren obey you? Kind of like that? Man. There's a cookie in the store for my granddaughter every time she obeys me. I mean, I've even given her cookies when she disobeyed me. <laughs> Not inside of mom and dad, but. <laughs> God doesn't stand over us as an angry God. He stands over us as a loving father who wants to save, wants to redeem, wants to claim you as his own. I want you to live a life that pleases Him and therefore your life is, is benefited by doing this tank of diligent heat. But along with the obedience of our children, grandchildren, don't you like it when they run up to you and cleave to you? That's sweet. Jackie Gleason, how sweet it is. That's sweet. That's what the Lord, our Father, Abba, wants us to do. Diligently hearken, diligently heed, and love him. Cleave to him with all your heart, with all your soul, with everything you have. 
love the Word of God. You know, if we just keep falling in love with Him more and more each day, you'll be amazed how many of the other things that don't matter just fall on the wayside. Fall in love with Him. Cleave to Him. When you love Him, it's easy to obey Him. And when you don't love Him, it becomes easy to disobey. Diligently heed and cleave to him. Joshua did not say that at the beginning of the conquest. He says it late in the chapter, late in the book, rather. Cleave to him. Number six. That thou mayest prosper. This is David's message to his son Solomon. 1 Kings 2 and 3, And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, and testimonies. And it's written in the law of Moses that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest. And a good King James word, if ever you heard one, and whithersoever. That's a good spitting word right there. Whithersoever. <laughs> Whatever way you turn. Prosper. 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 You know, I've seen some amazing things from my grandparents. I always thought growing up that my grandparents were dirty poor. At least that's what they told me. But you know, the old farm today worth about a million dollars. Not that I'm going to get any of it, but, you know, and uh, my other grandmother, just content that the Lord is any human being you ever met in life. Love the Lord, serve the Lord faithfully. Just an amazing woman. I asked her when she was way up in years, she lived to be 99. I said, uh, you doing okay financially, Grandma? You got everything you need? I said, man, I got $13,000 on the bank. That freaked me out a little bit. But she was completely content with everything she had. Of course, she had avocado green appliances that lasted 40 years. She had a freezer still working that was pre World War II. But I'm frost free now. It was working. She had a Maytag ringer washer because nothing cleans like a ringer. Made it 70 years. Maytag offered her a new one for her old one. Said, no, Dick put a new motor on it. <laughs> this woman, she was the living example of be content with whatsoever you have. She was just that. And I'm in good shape. Man, I could spend thirteen thousand dollars in a day if I had to. <laughs> if I had to, I think it's the want to gets us in trouble. Isn't it? My grandparents' life just explains this verse perfectly. They prospered. Uh, John says, "I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health." How as Thy soul prosper. Mm. Grandma couldn't have spent thirteen thousand dollars of her life depended on. Pretty cool. If we keep his commandments, God will perform his word with you. First Kings six and twelve. Then I will perform my word with thee, which I spake unto David. Thy Father. And finally today, keep his commandments that you may possess the land and leave it for an inheritance for your children. Now therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord, and the audience of our God, keep and seek for all the commandments of the Lord your God, that you may possess this good land and leave it for an inheritance for your children after you forever. To be honest with you, I'm miffed about 
Israel always tried to give away their land. All my life, Israel has tried to give away their land for peace. And I want to tell them, how does that work out for you? A bunch of scud missiles, that's how it works out for you. I think they need to get it in their minds and their thinking. God gave them that land. And if God gave them the land, and nobody, nobody going to take it away from them. They'll try, but in the end, it just gets larger and larger, fulfills the covenant of God. Did you know that it's actually hard to escape the blessing of God? It's like you got to work at it. God is a good God. Not only does He want to bless you, He has blessed you. And if you have nothing today, sitting listening to this message, you have absolutely nothing. If you have salvation, you have everything you need. Do you want or do you not want to live in the perfect will of God? If you do, if you want to live in the perfect will of God, keep His commandments. You'll hear it tonight if you come. If you love me, keep my commandments. And if you don't come, you want to read the context of that. If you love me, keep his commandments.